already. And she's a wine and beer expert coming first in the Market Kitchen World Beer Challenge. Welcome, Christina Picard. Lovely to see you. And last time I saw you in a cheerleader's outfit. I was. Yeah. Never again. <laughs> Never again. <laughs> Hello. Europe and Old World wines have been made for several thousand years, with the Greeks and Romans establishing some of the earliest vineyards. Compared to the relatively newer world wines of the Southern Hemisphere and North America, which began production in the late 19th century. Traditionally, their production methods and tastes have been worlds apart, but according to our next guest, they're becoming increasingly similar. Please welcome wine expert Christina Picard. Thank you for joining us again. No problem. Pleasure Very to be to here. Have. She's new world. She's new world. <laughs> I am. Well, yeah, I am. Mean, I'm going to try not to be biased okay, here. Okay, so talk to us about the old world wines. Sure. Well, old world's basically Europe. Yeah, I mean, pretty, pretty, small. pretty easy. I mean, Spain, Italy, France, obviously the biggest producers, but loads of countries in, in Europe making excellent, high quality wine. New world, on the other hand, is pretty much anything but Europe, yep. uh, outside of Europe. But the main players being the United States, mostly on the West Coast, being. Um, South America, so you have Chile, Argentina being yeah. pretty big players. We have South Africa, Australia, and New Zealand. Uh, so what are the differences, or the main differences, between new and old world wines? Right, so the new world, most of the time, is grown in hotter climates. Okay. So, I mean, some of them even in irrigated deserts. So they're going to be riper grapes, and therefore produce wines with more alcohol, with a fuller body, mm -hmm. basically. Whereas uh, with older world wines, they're concentrating more on more restrained, uh, restrained wines that are food wines. So often they can be a bit more acidic, a bit more tannic, with that dry mouth sort of bitter feeling, which is a little bit hard to take on its own, but when you match that with the local cuisine, they can work really brilliantly together. But the differences are sort of slowly ebbing away, aren't they? They're all sort of merging together. How, how are they becoming so similar now? Well, this is the globalization of wine, like so many other things, and the advent of the flying wine make maker, as they call them. And this is really as air travel becomes cheaper. Uh, Winemakers in the southern hemisphere, for example, they're on the opposite season as the north. Right. In their slow season, they're able to fly north, and for example, an Australian winemaker can help come help a winemaker in uh, in France to make their wine. So they're, they're sharing techniques and influences. So Excellent. Yes. Would you guys say that you were old or new world wine I, I used to say I was uh, old world, but I kind of really like new world wines. I mean, I like, I've like i tasted wines from Tasmania mm. and, and New Zealand, and fan, I love Pinot, Chilean, Pinot Noir like as a yeah, grape, yeah. and uh, they make brilliant wines. Well, I must say, it's going to be really interesting to see when China and India start mm. coming on stream too, how they fit into the general. Yes, Because they're, they're producing wines as well now, aren't they? And it sounds they? strange to call them new world in a way, but absolutely <laughs> they are, they are. Well, we love a little game here on Market we Kitchen, so we're going, to, uh, we're going to play a guess the old and guess the new. Guess the old, okay. So absolutely. basically, We've got an old world and a new world white wine, haven't we? Mm -hmm. And the same with the red. And it's up to you guys um, to decide which one you think. So should we all have a quaff of the first one? You know, you know, this is actually specifically designed to make us both look like idiots. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a go. Okay. So I will give you some hints as you're sniffing and as you're tasting. These are two Sauvignon Blancs. One is a Chilean Sauvignon Blanc. One is a Puy Fume, which is from the Loire Valley, also 100% Sauvignon Blanc from the Loire Valley in France. So the New World one, the Chilean one, will be more aromatic, jump out of the glass a bit more. Right. Green fruits like apples on the palate, it'll be lemon. Oh, you've made up your mind already, Matthew. Yeah, what did you think of the first one? The first one, I think, I think it's Old World. I mean, I, I could be completely wrong, but I just got that. You, trusting my instinct. Do you like it? I do like it. it. It has got this kind of exotic sort of flavour. Okay. Matthew, do you like the first one? Not really, no. I think it lacks structure. I think it's all, it's, it, it tastes like fruit pastels to me. <laughs> Let's try the okay. second one. Yeah. Second one, what do you think? Well, well, he's going... Making all the right noises. I think, it's, I think this is much flintier. I think it's, it's got some chalky backbone to it. It's a cleaner wine, and I think this is a wine which will go fan fabulously well with, with sort of cream um, dishes, something like that. It, it's quite dry, but that has, got a, that has got abundance of fruit, which I quite like. I quite like a fruity wine. Right, OK. Which one do you think is the old, and which one do you think is new? Do you think, what do you think A is? <laughs> I think that's new and I think that's old. So you think A is new and B is old. old, Theo? I'm going opposite, so I'm going old and new. Okay, Theo, do you want to remove A and see what it is? Oh, oh well done, well done Matthew, you're you well absolutely done. right. <laughs> It was a Chilean Sauvignon Blanc. It's a Razzeries, a 2009 from Casablanca Valley. So very cool climate, but still loads of tropical fruits in there. And 6.99. Yes, exactly. Chile, as awesome. we say in the States, very good bang for your buck with that one. I good mean, bang, you get yeah. uh, yeah. And good the quality Puy Fumé um, is 9.95. This one here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's reveal the Puy Fumé. 
So fume, meaning smoky, flinty, you were spot mm. on there. Mineral, smoky, uh, Puy is the town across yep. the river from Sancerre. So very, very good. It's yes. interesting yeah. how it actually hangs around in the mouth too for, I think, longer than this one. You think it has a longer mm. finish? Yeah, I'd have to agree actually. Right, yeah. let's yeah. move on to the red then. Mm. However. So, and if you could just taste red A, have a little quaff of that and see what you think. So as you're smelling it, we are comparing a Shiraz from South Australia, Langhorn Creek, so just south of Barossa. One of them is a Barbera from the Piedmont region in northwest Italy. Which is uh, your neck of the woods, so you better get this right. Ah, no pressure or anything there. So mm. it's an old world Italian, which will be more acidic, but less tannins. It'll be more herbaceous, uh, whereas the Shiraz will be bursting with fruit and chocolate, rich red berries, very, very fruit forward. Theo, what do you think of the first one? I like the first one. It's quite nice and dry. It's got loads of lovely fruits. Very sort of chewy. Mm -hmm. I like it. Matthew? Well, I just got an odd sort of bitter aftertaste on this. And uh, it, it's very, it, it's pretty tannic, but... Um, uh, which one I prefer. I think it needs to be, I think it's something which you need to be open for an hour or two before you can really get what it is. Uh, Theo, what do you think of the second one? The second one, uh, it's again, it's quite fruity. It's got quite a sweetness on it, though. It's kind of quite really ripe like and, and, and uh, it's very easy to drink and tastes pretty mm. alcoholic. Yes, I would agree with you on that. I think, again, the fruit mm. is much more to the fore. Um, I think it's a quaffing wine, whereas the other one is a food wine. Definitely. Theo, which one do you think is New World? That's the New World is number four. Right. So, B. I agree with my learning, ah. Pro <laughs> Professor Theo Randall. Okay, I so you think that the, the, so, the, first uh, one, the first one is... Is old. Right. So, Theo, if you could reveal red A. You are both incorrect. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, heavens to Murgatroyd. This is a new world. <laughs> this is a Bremerton Shiraz. Wow. It's a 2007. Oh. It does need a couple years, honestly. If you left it, if you had the patience to leave it for a couple years, it would smoothen out a bit. Or decant it. And if you could reveal red B, please, Theo. I must admit, I've never tasted a Barbera taste so sweet. Well, it is sweet fruit, but there's loads of acidity in there, and it's very herbaceous as well. So this one is Walter Massa, and it's Super from Piedmont right. in Italy, and it is uh, widely available. It's eleven pounds thirty-nine pence. A worth every penny. Right, I have got it's a great room. room. What's old, what's new, but I know they're all <laughs> rather delicious. Completely <laughs> confused. <laughs> but we like it. Yeah, thank you. Very